listening to Diminishing Returns, the podcast about sequels, prequels, spin-offs and reboots. I'm Chris Scott. And across from me, the future head of the Podcast Corporation, <laughs> it's Alan Johnson. How do you pod people? In the not-too-distant future, wars will no longer exist, but there will be rollerball. In the distant future of 2018... The sport of rollerball occupies and entertains the populace. There is now no poverty, war or hunger, and the world is controlled by corporations which have supplanted nations and governments. The game of rollerball pits two corporate teams against one another on a banked rink where they must battle it out in a brutalistic version of basketball on roller skates. Cleverly developed as a tool to entertain like the Circus Maximus of ancient Rome, the game is overly complex and violent, designed to be hard to play and harder still to master. Yet Jonathan E. has succeeded in both, becoming the game's champion and its one true star. In a society and sport which exists to show the insignificance of the actions of the individual, he's a danger to the status quo and becomes an unlikely revolutionary, willing to sacrifice his comfortable and luxurious life for freedom of choice. This 1975 film, based on the short story Roll of All Murder, resonates as a sharp satire of corporate power in the modern era. However, its 2002 remake directed by John McTiernan seems to have missed the nuances of the original, shifting its focus instead to that of big money showboating sports superstars, made at the height of the Attitude Era of the WWE and clearly inspired by the presentation of professional wrestling. But the real danger and difficulty of rollerball is creating a convincing sport from the ground up, and the differing approaches to the original material make these two very contrasting movies. And with the remake ultimately responsible for the incarceration of director John McTiernan, rollerball is truly a dangerous game. It is more than a game. It is rollerball. Yeah, so uh, to clarify one of the things in your intro, uh, the incarceration of John McTiernan is not because he made a fucking terrible film, <laughs> no, which frankly no. is the greater crime, but that he, he was involved in some sort of shady business with a private investigator and he was trying to like get some dirt on some guy. And... Uh, he employed a showbiz private eye to wiretap one of the producers of the film to find out if he was uh, trash talking the project. Apparently the producer and the director both wanted to take the film in differing directions. Was but... one of those directions a good fucking film. Yes, I suspect that <laughs> one of the directions was a good film. There was apparently a first draft of this script, which is for the, the 2002 remake, which was widely praised, but John McTiernan didn't like the social commentary in the script, so he kept stripping it back and stripping it back, and he wanted it to hew more to the colourful world of professional wrestling. So we ended up with this kind of mush of a movie that we'll talk about very shortly. All right. The original 1975 Rollerball, directed by Norman Jewison, starring James James Can, you know, watching it again, right? Obviously, there's bits of it that are, that are slightly dated. Yeah. But I don't mean even like the obvious stuff, which actually was the thing that always annoys me when we talk about films like this. Like, I read something online or something was like, I mean, if you can get past the fact they're wearing safari suits like it's uh-huh. the 70s. <laughs> oh, well done, Captain Obvious. Film made in time sometimes has the fashions of that time in it, even though it's fucking meant to be in the future. Well, what a great fucking point. Holy shit. Where's your 12 part series in the history of cinema? <laughs> fucking genius. Thank you. Fuck off. If you can't get past films from yesteryear having uh, different fashions or worse effects, then frankly, it's a failure of your fucking imagination, not the filmmaker. <laughs> yes, right? yes. This is, sorry, I'm very angry there for a second. Um, <laughs> but uh, and but I mean, like, there's some certain sort of things that maybe are would be a bit heavy-handed or a bit maybe a bit languid for for modern tastes. Uh-huh. But on the whole, I really, really enjoyed this. Again, yeah. I think the the rollerball scenes are really brutal. It's amazing. There's only really three matches, three matches in yeah. this movie, but the the sequences that you see are shot so amazingly. I think the big thing is all of that cast that are rollerball players all learn to skate to a particularly high level yeah. because they are performing and skating and performing stunts for the most part inside this rink. And they had a uh, Olympic cameramen on roller skates following the action, so you really feel inside those rollerball yeah, sequences. Yeah, the, the use of you know I guess kind of handheld cameras and stuff yeah. mixed with uh, big wider shots to really let you know like you know exactly what's happening in this 
game yeah. at all times, uh, which is something that you can't say for the the remake. But you Absolutely. know, and considering that you know technology and the amount of work that probably had to go in and make that rollerball uh, in 1975, you know, look that good on the screen mm-hmm. and it make that much sense. You know, just a real obviously people that know what they're doing, but just simple things like somebody falling and then you just see them slide down the ring and a, a trail of blood. Yeah. But they don't be like, oh, look, it's blood. It's just like, yeah, that just happened, mate. Fucking brutal, on it? And you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's brutal. There's a lot made of this being a violent film that's anti-violence. So all the violence that happens in it, none of it's glorified, even yeah. though it takes place in this sort of sporting arena. But I think the 75 film really takes its time. It's like a kind of 15 minute, 20 minute opening that we see the whole event just unspool of a rollerball match. So we, it begins with the lights in the arena being switched on and then the, the yeah. staff coming in to check the track and check the equipment. Then the team slowly come in to the, do yeah. their warm-ups. It orients and, you into this world. Uh, so it shows without telling you how all of this works because you're there for the whole process. Even though this is a completely made up completely fabricated game you've at least got a grasp of how things work and where you are in the arena and who everyone is yeah and it's so clever whereas the 2002 film first of all begins with some street losing because hey it was the turn of the millennium so x games are radical dude cowabunga we segue from that to the game which we need a commentator to tell us the rules yeah and then also to cut to a computer generated video to explain other stuff that's going on uh, it's a mess I mean the, the original you see this game play out you get the important stuff they've got to get this ball they got to put it into this wee bit and that's a goal yeah and in between you're good to get fucked up <laughs> perfect like yeah. I don't need to know their offside rule do you know what I mean I don't, <laughs> no, I don't no. care I don't care about I'm not sitting there going oh, but how many substitutions did they get on the bench just like goal badassery happens great and James Cann is Jonathan E, right? Yeah. Straight away, cool future protagonist name. Jonathan <laughs> E. That's cool as fuck. We've done away with poverty. We've also done away with long son names. Amazing. <laughs> Love it. Jonathan E is just, that just sounds cool. Uh, also, I believe that means he's probably the great, great, great grandson of Prince's percussionist from the 80s. <laughs> uh, Sheila E. And he's the hot shit star of Rollerball. Yeah. Not only just the team, but of the actual sport. He's like, you know, your Leo Messi, your Ronaldo, your Paddy McCourt. One of the main big, <laughs> big superstars. <laughs> Stars, uh, niche jokes for fans of Scottish football um, and probably only half of the fans of Scottish football um, but anyway and he's like this big star and this whole film is basically you know he's being used as the sport by the, the powers that be to give people something to watch get out their aggression but also to show them that it's just teamwork and that nobody's bigger than the whole Yeah. and what I love about it is that James Cann isn't like a brilliant genius mm-hmm. he's just this guy that just has to be really good at this fucking sport and it's like a, just a kind of lunkhead almost that's what i love about his performance is yeah. there are sequences in this movie where you can actually see him trying to process what's happening because as much as this 75 film sets up the sport for us it also very quickly and elegantly sets up the society that that sport yeah. exists within so there is this corporate hierarchy and he is just a stooge for the corporation i mean it's great because uh, they describe you know nations are bankrupt the corporation wars are, are things of the past and now there's corporations that they run society now yeah it's a kind of cool idea yeah. When you think it's just about, been overused now. Yeah, but, but when you think about like legislation now and how it's in service of corporation versus actually in service of the oh, people. All right, comrade fucking Alan. All right, all right, mate. Uh, Occupy Wall Street over here, guys. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Anyway, just to go back to James Cann's performance quickly, he is really struggling to understand his place in this world, but what's marvellous about the performance is that he plays it as someone who doesn't have the intellect to actually yeah. grasp what's going on around him. So there are points where he's trying to express himself, but he, as that character, wouldn't have even the vocabulary to express it, his inner turmoil. It's very cleverly done. And it's brilliant. He's grown up in a society where he's never really had a choice of freedom. No. Everything's been provided for him by the corporations, but then that means that you know he's never really had personal agency other than when he's on the track as a rollerball star yeah. and then the head of the energy corporation that, that runs Houston and the Houston team which is who he plays for mm-hmm. they go uh, we're going to need you to retire and he doesn't understand why just that simple little why do you want me to retire uh-huh. and the fact that they won't give him an answer and that means that the only thing that he can sort of have any personal agency in they're wanting to take that away from him and he's just this very simple guy who's grown up in a society where he's never been taught to question things starts to question and go I just need to know why and what's uh-huh. great about it is it becomes this very existential thing of I don't care what this costs me now I just need to to know there's this little just this something in his in his gut that's just making him go i want to know why yeah and that's a 
brilliant, simple, yet complex emotion. You know, in its very simplicity, it's actually really smart. And uh -huh. and then he starts to question then not only why this happened to him, but why are we in this society? Lovely, lovely, kind of great sci-fi bits of business. And just filled with like character actors and stuff. Ralph like, Richardson, oh, John Heisman. Just loads of faces you're like, oh, I've seen them in a million films from this time. Yeah, yeah. And they're always great. I mean, the the old guy that's the, the kind of head of the energy corporation keeps hassling him. As soon as he speaks, it's like, I'm a sleazy corporate guy. <laughs> Uh, isn't this a great performance? You go, yes, yes it is. Yeah, please, yeah. please continue to be the sleazy corporate guy for the whole film. He obviously started as an intern at OCP under the old man and he's, yeah. he's come up through the sci-fi corporate bad guy ranks. It's, and he's, it, <laughs> I, you know, there's just so many like fucked up ideas. They're all popping pills. Oh, I, uh, love that. I love that, that everybody's just like kind of on whatever like I, uppers, downers just, yeah. to, just to numb themselves. I mean, there's a corporate it. party where I think they're all on ecstasy. Yeah. Because they're all just like touching each other's faces and stuff. That, like, like if there wasn't like the only way it could have been more like they were on ecstasy if somebody started playing Balearic House uh, you know <laughs> have a beat drop um, but the, you know the little like reveal that they took his wife from him because another because an executive wanted her that well that was it tough to you, you lose your wife yeah and so even though he's a superstar of the sport he, he's still just below someone else he's a low man in yeah. the totem he and just... they fucking rotate women in to keep him entertained yeah like uh -huh. a six month rotation it's like going at Nam fucking James Caan <laughs> You weren't there, man. You think, think look how bristly his hair is. You know, it was like down his pubes. It was like trying to part metal. That's something to touch on. The 1975 film and its idea of male beauty is insane. Oh, it's all these like kind of really rugged men. Yeah. That's the best I could say about them. I, Square jaw. There's men. no uh, not, no androgynous. They're not handsome, beautiful people. Which again, and they wouldn't be if they were rollerball stars. It serves the film well, but it's just funny how things change that we fast forward to uh, 2002 and then suddenly the rollerball team are LL Cool J, yeah. Chris Klein and Rebecca Romain Stamos. It's crazy. So things I enjoyed about the original yep. before we go on to the fucking shit show that was the remake. Because it's his film, it's also slightly racist. Now, I don't know if that's uh, on, you know, the team are racist. Uh -huh. um, I think Moon Pie is just casually racist because the team itself, it's black guys and white guys and they're both on the, the same level on the team. Yeah. But obviously Moon Pie seems to be like particularly racist towards the Asian characters in the film. Well, there's, they go to play Tokyo and uh, it's like immediately they're like yes the Tokyo rollerball skills are based on karate and you're like yeah. oh okay <laughs> Asian guys in a 70s film but also when you watch the match all that means is instead of punching people they just chop them. Yeah. There's no actual, there's nothing else. That's the supposedly elegant, mysterious art of rollerball the, that they've the got. the judo and the hapkido that they alluded to in their training session. Just turns out that they boot each other differently or a hand chop. I also thought it was maybe a little insensitive that the Tokyo team were obviously the yellow team. That, <laughs> yeah. That yeah. is... Uh, yeah. Yeah. As the film goes on, you know, James kind of starts to question what's been happening. He finds out that you can't get unedited history books. They're all on computer and all been, they've all been transcribed and summarised and edited but in a, brilliant, a really good scene that I like a wee touch is where he's like you know he gets flown around personally at the games because he's the uh -huh. big star and he's about to walk on it like a helicopter just himself and he realises that obviously like the corporations are against him and he just goes yeah, yeah I think I'll get a team bus this time uh, <laughs> like, you can yeah. just make sure you radio them and tell them I'm not in this thing uh -huh. um, you know there's loads of wee lovely touches and as he goes on he's questioning the society and he and obviously he realises that they want him out yes. and that they are bringing in different women to try and persuade him uh -huh. uh, and all he wants is his original wife back because yeah. she's the one woman that he he's loved but you know going back to his he's not able to express himself like he can't even find it to say I loved her he, he is just like something makes me want this person and so finally they even resort to trying to coax him back letting them meet up again in the hope that that will you know at least yeah. sedate him or placate him in some way to allow him to come back and, and like a fucking brutal scene where he's like so you know how's things and it's like oh it's great you know I've, I've got two kids and stuff and mm -hmm. he's just like oh cool cool you've got kids just little Jimmy Can's caveman heart is breaking uh, he's hot and bad uh, and he's obviously raging really nice that's something we talk about a lot in here there's a little bit of care and a little bit of like let's try and make this good let's try and do something mm -hmm. let's try mm -hmm. and do something that's just a bit better and, but obviously as it goes on they're like right we need him to lose we need Jonathan E to lose uh -huh. and what they start to do is like fuck with the rules of the game yeah they, you know they just go uh, by the last game there's no subs and there's no fouls or penalties so basically you can do 
whatever you want in that ring yeah. and nothing will happen to you also no time limit like like 24 <laughs> hours later it's just like that's it you know one guy left standing it's like one of those dance-a-thons that like in they shoot Greece, when they've got right. like who, who can dance the longest <laughs> I was going to go for they shoot horses don't they which I, I would like to point out is, is pretty good that I for once made the fucking more uh, auteur based uh, high culture low culture high culture yeah well, that's fine yeah Greece sure sure Al whatever uh, and so you know this whole film sort of builds up to this final game and it's just brutal and, and you know the game before uh, against Tokyo his best mate is put in a coma yeah moon pie is uh, taken out at which point he goes to the doctor who's Kato yeah. Bert Kwok yeah, uh, yeah. from uh, Harry Hill TV show and, and, uh, and, 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 yeah, and all and the Pink Panther films yeah and Inspector Clouseau films as a, as a ridiculously cheery doctor which again brilliantly creepy and weird and, uh-huh. and fucked up um, so his mate's in a coma even his wife his ex-wife has come to try and persuade him not to do this he realises he's being used and everyone's like just don't play the game just uh-huh. retire and he's like fuck this noise I'm going to fucking play rollerball. And that final game is just brutality. People yeah. are getting collapsing dead on the thing, getting flung <laughs> into the, the, the railings at the side, blah, blah. And James can just basically, through the pure force of will, Jonathan, yeah. he's just like, I'm just going to batter cunts and I'm going <laughs> to fuck, ev- fuck everyone in this place. What's great is that he does obviously succeed. He has the last of his opponents and he's ready to bash his brains in. Uh-huh. And he goes, nah, I'm not doing this because he knows that's part of what is expected of him. Yeah. Yeah. And then he skates round, and as he's skating round, the whole crowd who at first were baying for blood. Uh-huh. I've watched this carnage come, they become silent, and Jonathan E's just, fuck you, I'm not doing what you tell me. To quote, <laughs> in their world, a classic song. Yeah. Um, he skates round, puts the, the ball on the thing, he, they win 1 0. Yeah. Which shows the American sports have changed. Usually they hate those kind of games. <laughs> Puts the ball thing, and he just skates round afterwards as the crowd who have been silent from all this brutality start just screaming, Jonathan, 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 Jonathan. And it just freeze frames on his angry face being like, fuck you, I rebelled, you can't make me do what you want me to do. What a wonderfully ambiguous ending. Yes. Because what no, happens after that? Uh-huh. Never designed for a sequel. It's made at that time when it is like kind of nihilistic endings and yeah. bloody these bugs. Of, uh-huh. he's probably killed about three guys but he's showed them that he's not their fucking puppet yeah. and that maybe he gets taken out straight away uh-huh. and shot afterwards but, but maybe that action has started a revolution that who people knows? are going to topple the corporation who knows but for once better to live a lifetime in the grave than as a puppet or a slave do you know what I mean <laughs> fucking hardly come hardly <laughs> fall my friend but the point is that that's what's great about it it takes itself seriously but it doesn't make it kind of cheesy it doesn't soft soap anything it's just like yeah this is a brutal guy and he's your hero and basically he's murdered people on this rollerball rink and that's his rebellion but that's the thing throughout the, all of the sport like life is cheap they just kill off players new players yeah. come in it's all about the young just replenishing the ranks he's the one guy that survived for 10 years yeah. against all the odds well, that wood must be modern in the knees you know what I mean? <laughs> well there's loads of talk on the, the sort of making of stuff about how the, the stunt guys when they started practicing one guy just fell and broke his hip and that was him out so they get down to the rink you know they all have to practice so yeah. that's how they start to formulate well we know we've got these baskets for the balls we know we need to skate and they all start to try and work out well how do we move around this track because it's all banked they start to develop the different teams the way the different teams move all of this stuff and then they get quite cocky and they all think we're great so then when shooting stopped for one day they were all like right let's have a game and James Cann says in the making of it lasted about 11 seconds before it was just a bloodbath <laughs> <laughs> and so it's good to know that the stunt coordinators and the people making the film were really interested in the mechanics of making this work as yeah. a game but as soon as like the people who could play it started to try it was just a oh, complete no. yeah. mess I mean, that's, I, mean, I mean I think you get that sense of you know the effort that's went in it really does feel like unlike a lot of future sports although it is ridiculous on some level uh-huh. you also be like yeah like this kind of makes sense as a game it's not dumb and stupid they have to travel around this thing and put the ball in there that's uh-huh. not far away from other sports just that there's more chance of you getting you know your arm ripped out your socket by a bike that freaking runs you over yeah there's not many competitive sports where you're going to worry about being knocked down by a motorcycle when you're trying to grab a ball but everything <laughs> everything else is kind of almost normal sport uh-huh. and so they've just add this little extra element of violence just amping that up to make it good um i just thought it's a film 
that's really trying for something about what does it mean to be personally free? Uh -huh. uh, Comfort versus personal choice. Yep, and what the sacrifices you would make for your own freedom and your own knowledge. Lovely stuff. It even touches on assisted suicide when he's going to the hospital to yeah. check on Moon Pie. I don't think there's even a film these days that would confront an issue like that. So, I think we both agree. This is a fucking decent flight. I see, I can understand why people maybe wouldn't like it because it's it takes its time. It's a sci-fi film of the 70s. Yeah. You know, it's not interested in being flashing a lot, but it does have moments of really great kind of action, as I say, in the actual game itself. I think it's a really interesting performance. I think it's a really interesting idea. I also love the fact that there's only one font in the future. Yes. It's that, it is that rollerball font is on everything. Thank God it's not Helvetica. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, we've like, gotten something interesting. It, that font is on everything, like elevators <laughs> and fucking, it's yeah, like, okay, that's, that's fucking cool. I also like the urban brutalist uh, architecture, all the corporate buildings and stuff. It was oh, shot yeah, in yeah. Munich, I think, and used a lot of buildings that had been built for the Munich Olympics. Right. So there's all that brutalist stuff yeah, going on. And, looks and great. even now, they still look super futuristic. Aye, aye. And it is great. It's a it, really harsh and unfeeling. It does, it does a great job of making this world be futuristic. Yeah. Just by tone, without going like, whoa, there's flying cars, which <laughs> yeah. there isn't in this film. Um, I really enjoyed it. Glad to see it held up. A few things about that future, the fact that they keep swapping these women around, I just I just hope to God they've eliminated STDs. <laughs> uh, I can see a flaw in this society when everyone's getting maybe, gonorrhea. Maybe, maybe the pill pop and it's not ecstasy, it's just all like... Um, antibiotics. Antibiotics, <laughs> yeah, they're just all on a course of meds. Oh yeah, they also have, uh, the, the, the evil corporations have a, uh, one of my favourite tropes in these films, an evil video conference. Yeah. <laughs> they've all got all their own screens and it's like, do we agree to my dastardly plan? And they, they'll just press a wee button that says like... Um, affirmative. Affirmative, that's what it is, yeah. Um, big fan of that. Hey, you're listening to episode 60 of Diminishing Returns, the podcast about sequels, prequels, spin off, and reboots. It's our episode about Rollerball, the 1975 good film, and the 2002 <laughs> piece of shit that I was forced to watch. So, why don't you cheer us up by following us on social media or sending us an email? Uh, you can email us at diminishingpod at gmail.com. You can get us on Twitter at diminishingpod. On Facebook, Diminishing Returns Podcast. Uh, on Instagram, we're diminishingpod. We have a blog at diminishingpod.wordpress.com. And on YouTube, if you search for Diminishing Returns, you'll find some stuff there. We are an independent podcast. Please read review subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and tell your friends you know if you like cult films can understand Scottish accents and uh, like some filthy jokes please tell them to listen to this podcast so that I didn't watch Rollerball 2002 in vain thanks guys you know, you've got this really interesting sci-fi property. You decide to remake that. So the first mm -hmm. thing you do is throw all the good stuff out the window. A, it's not in the future anymore. No. Right? It's fucking in the now times. Well, great. Uh -huh. That already sucks. You've taken like one of the cool bits about it was that it was the future. No, we don't want that. All right. Well, the other cool bit is that Jonathan E has a cool name. Oh, we're not going to call him Jonathan E. We're going to call him Jonathan Cross or some shit. Because well, he's fucking livid. Right? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, that sucks. You've already ruined that bit. Well, at least we've got this fucking rollerball star who's you know maybe grappling with the end of his career oh no 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 what the fuck John McTiernan no no check it out we're gonna start this film instead of this is a sport that we all know and you have to just join in uh -huh. why don't we have the boy from American Pie and you're like oh the funny main character no no, no not him oh <laughs> Stifler no 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 not him wait Tara fucking Reed is it Tara Reed that's gonna be in this and he's like no no the floppy haired one we're gonna make him do like a really fucking off brand Keanu Reeves impersonation <laughs> Uh, and he's going to be an extreme sports star. But he's meant to be a top draft pick for the NHL. So he's an ice hockey player, which has a certain internal logic that if he's an ice hockey player, yeah. he's good on skates. And but that he's not doing that anymore. For some reason, they get introduced to him as a street loser. But for people that don't know what street loser is, which is fucking everyone, Alan. <laughs> like, it's basically you're going down on your back on a skateboard. Yeah, uh -huh, right. a big skateboard. Uh -huh. But all it does is show that he's an extreme dude. But it they're getting it filmed, so it's obviously a guess for the internet or some shit. Uh, maybe. Do you know what I mean? Is... Trying to be some sort of extreme sports guy. And he and he's flying down this hill. Nob right hill in San Francisco. <laughs> yep. As I was going to say, obviously San Francisco. And it's like, oh, okay, so we're not in the future. This is just some young boy. And instead of him being already the star, he's, he doesn't even give a fuck about it. And then LL Cool J, right? Yeah. There might be lots of bits of this where I'm a bit fuzzy in the details because frankly, it's quite hard for me to watch the screen while slapping my head in frustration. <laughs> okay. um, LL Cool J 
just happens to know he's coming down this hill and saves yes. him from the cops because because I thought oh that's his mate he's been waiting for him and he's like hey when did you get back in town and I'm like yeah. wait so hold on he was just randomly driving around San Francisco <laughs> right the streets of San Francisco <laughs> with Carl Malden and then he's like oh there's the buddy I used to play hockey with back at fucking school or college or whatever yeah the there's fuck. no way those two ever were at the same, same educational co- yeah, he's like, establishment hey, at the same he's like time. a solid 15 years older than you right but, but not only that it made, maybe he was held back a few years <laughs> that's it but so we're meant to believe that he's just randomly driving around the street like oh, I'm gonna get myself chocolate milkshake oh that'll be nice <laughs> oh there's my ex hockey pal who I've been wanting to speak to and then he opens his door and like pulls him in right Yeah. Uh, and then he's like oh when did you get in town ha 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 instead of going holy shit it's you <laughs> like how did you fucking find me you know and LL Cool J uh, sorry I had to give his proper name ladies love Cool J uh, uh, Todd is his real name no it's ladies love <laughs> Um, he pulls fucking American Pie <laughs> uh, I'm just calling him American Pie what was it he played in, in American Pie what was the sport lacrosse lacrosse right so the floppy haired uh, lacrosse player from American Pie so he pulls American Pie into the car and he's all like wow you're earning lots of money and he's like right that's because I play rollerball <laughs> uh, and then he brings out this picture postcard that's got like a camel oh it's in Asia so there's this exotic stuff on the postcard see yeah. no like roller skates or balls or yeah, helmets yeah, or nothing. and he's just like I play roller ball oh that's that's not a sport it's it's a circus or something and then he goes home and he realises the police are after him for mm. I guess dangerous sliding <laughs> uh, and then it cuts to Kazakhstan yes right? uh-huh. so he, even though the police are after him he's magically got away so that's where they're having roller ball already it's not a future well, it's, well or it may be the near future it, but was, it was made in 2002 and set in 2005 it's the now times they can fuck right off of that shit so it's not in the future it's not a person who's really great at this sport and who's, who's, who's a 10 years in veteran and it's not about how the sport is used in society as a pressure valve mm-hmm. the whole sci-fi part of it was like the corporations are taking over and personal freedom right you're like what oh. was this one it's like yeah yeah Kazakhstan uh, there's miners and miners they don't pay the miners very much but they let them watch <laughs> rollerball and you're going wait what so you've tried to kind of shoehorn in I guess like the freedom that we give away in this, that sci-fi thing well it's, instead of that it's like it's how oligarchs in <laughs> Kazakhstan get miners <laughs> people that work in mines under a fictional oligarch how it allows them to make more money and it gives them a pressure valve from being oppressed in Kazakhstan but the main character is just this dumb kid and I guess he sees like a bit of oppression at one point mm-hmm. and he's all like oh ah, <laughs> this is wrong and that's meant to like spark this whole big to do uh-huh. thematically it doesn't really track for me no uh dramatically it's really mishandled <laughs> yeah. um in the original the whole sort of conspiracy if you will is just figured out by one man's dogged determination to 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 live his own way mm-hmm. right right so that, that sets up like an eternal struggle you know a struggle between man's primal sense of self mm-hmm. against the state in this film the conspiracy unravels when the mascot of the team who is <laughs> for some reason <laughs> handicapped a handicapped man wanders onto the roller rink and somebody smacks him right in the face making him go to hospital I, yeah yeah that I'm, is right that i didn't just fucking dream that did i i, I, don't, I don't know if he was a mascot and i think well, he the, ended up dead no i thought he was I mean, in it later on uh, who can tell so hold on right so if he's not the mascot alan uh-huh. they've got this like developmentally challenged person playing rollerball he's like one half a master blaster but he could barely skate like when you saw him he was all like oh uh-huh. i can't skate and shit uh-huh there's no way he's surely some sort of mascot it was in, that portion was an incredibly poor taste it was like they had either that he was like just a big doll or they pushed that idea so far that he just became like you say oh, like developmental you, I mean challenge. you watch like, that he is he's mentally handicapped yes uh huh and uh, and that is all in this rollerball world it's all just to push ratings ratings equals money so the more accidents happen the more the ratings go up which is always hilarious whenever you see the ratings counter well, I was going like to say they do, they do handily have a screen that they keep looking at called something like global ratings matrix or something <laughs> and it's just like a percentage but you're like a percentage of what I know it's just an arbitrary scale it's like oh somebody's been killed on the track so weird then to believe the people watching are phoning up their friends going guess what they've just killed the guy in the red helmet and then some more people tune in somehow instantaneously yeah like they don't it's not like it goes viral and then everybody's watching it on YouTube yes, or Twitter uh-huh. it's oh by the way I really want to tune into this sport that I've somehow just heard about a second ago <laughs> Literally. where they murdered or at least hospitalised a giant <laughs> handicapped man somehow that is what's happened here right it's utter bullshit so basically the, the conspiracy is like 
like, wait, they wanted this to happen. They had all the, the cameras trained on him. Mm. They knew this was going to happen. But how did he know he was on the, in the arena? Uh, was it, it somebody just pushing, pushing him out? Pushing him out. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. So in this sequence, you also get to see the, the new rollerball mm-hmm. and the new rollerball teams. Mm-hmm. See, before we even got to the rollerball bit, <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote, it's already bullshit. That's what I've put. So and you've, then, not, you've not even got to the raison d'etre for this movie. No, and, I, and then I see the rollerball game and yeah. I'm like, oh, that last bit wasn't half as bullshit as I thought it was <laughs> because this fucking nonsense, they're all wearing like stupid masks and shit that yeah. don't make any fucking sense. No. They're all different nationalities, different teams, right? The game itself seems to have been designed by somebody who doesn't want any spectators to be able to see anything at any point. No, the track is now a figure of eight with yep. ramps and jumps and a sort of like a no man's land in the middle. That never gets used. That yeah. never gets used. It seems to all be about just presenting these like radical jumps on the skates and the motorcycles. It's fucking utter bullshit. There's four teams that appear in this film. All right. Now, in the last film, we got to see New York, Madrid, Houston and Tokyo. Yeah. So, you know, that's all fine. That all like makes a bit of sense within these like corporations. But this, the four teams are the Marauders, the Golden Horde, the Hawks and Jonathan Cross's team, the Horsemen, which is weird because it's a mixed gender team. Yeah, it's horse people. The horse anything. people. Also, yeah. like there's no reference to horses on their like jerseys no. or mm. anything like that. Is it maybe that maybe like every member of the team speaks a bit like this? A bit <laughs> horse. Thank um, you. <laughs> but it all goes back to McTiernan's insistence to push this to be more like the WWE everyone has a character it's an easily identifiable character that's presented through costume but the costumes by and large are terribly impractical yeah in the original they look like they could be sportsmen and and this is just like it, it wasn't bullshit. that far away from like an NFL uniform but they looked crucially they looked like a team yeah I mean when you go to the dressing room in rollerball it's like an athlete's dressing room in the 75 one uh-huh. when you go to the, the new one the dressing room it's like some sort of suck de soleil fucking thing <laughs> that they've all been doing <laughs> And here's another thing, right? At the match, at this fucking <laughs> arena, right? For some reason, there's a terrible instrumental new metal band playing. Just, just playing, playing live, time. right? And another thing about that is that for some reason, this stupid instrumental fucking new metal band, Instru New Metal, uh, <laughs> has a keyboard player who's really into prog by the sounds of it. Because it's like, oh, it's terrible industrial, like, new metal. And then every now and again, it's like... <laughs> That's impractical. It's a, what, like... You're not gonna you can have a live band playing while the match is going on. What the fuck? Yeah, there's apparently a lot of money in this sport, but Jean Renault, the ultimate bad guy who's trying to sell rollerball he, now to He's the, the US, oligarch that, that owns the, the US cable company in two thousand and two. Yeah. Not satellite, like mm, Aye. Yeah. And that's uh, he's trying to sell this game and he's like the big bad guy. Uh-huh. Now, I'll give John Re- Renault something. He is putting in a minimal amount of effort, yet also <laughs> overplaying every scene. Which to be fair, I'm like, fair fuck. That mate. takes a special kind of performer. Aye, you know what? What did you enjoy about that film? The paycheck? Then fucking get on, you fella. Um, from the commentary of this film, it was mentioned that Jean Renault speaks almost no English and has to learn. He has a, So he has a dialect coach with him right. who teaches him the whole script phonetically. And, so and that, it shows. <laughs> I am trying to sell this to the American cable company. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? But obviously, this has all been set up so that the global ratings network figures um, go <laughs> yeah. up, right? What I like about this, what I like about this film, I don't like it. It's awful. <laughs> I remember this film. But like the, the kind of how it manages to fuck up on almost every level, it very quickly transpires that American Pie is banging Rebecca Romaine Stamos, yeah. right? And they pump, and she's all like, "Ah, oh, we're not going to get to this at my flat because I'm trying to be a badass." Yeah. And he's all like, "Ah, oh, whatever, right?" But then he turns around to her, you know, your your face isn't as bad as you think. And this is because she's got scars on our face yeah two visible but pretty small scars yes on the face of let's be very clear a pure pump <laughs> she knows she's still a ride two tiny little blemishes on this and the rest of my face is just pure amazing and I've got a fucking knockout body and I'm a real smoke show <laughs> boy I'm so conflicted inside like what fuck off she's de- <laughs> like she's the best looking woman in that country right easily uh, I was like is he negging her like is he is he gonna be like ah, gonna get in your head you know um, apparently 
apparently the original cut of this film was over two hours long. And you got and, to see your boobs. And a lot more boobs and a lot more blood, but it was all taken out because MGM wanted to cut it down to a PG-13. So on the boob sequence, they digitally added a shadow to fall yeah. across her breasts. A boob shadow. <laughs> boob <laughs> always thought about boobs. Shadow, boob shadow. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even imagine if the, the nudity and violence was added back into this film, if it would make it any more enjoyable because it is entirely incomprehensible and that's with an enormous amount of reshoots that have gone back to, to try make it make and more fill sense. in the gaps <laughs> like I read this afterwards I was watching this being like fuck me that film's like incomprehensible bullshit and then I read like they spent fucking months reshooting it to make it make more sense what was the fucking film before was it like Twin Peaks to Return <laughs> like did they just have fucking like mad shit I'm halfway through you know and listen it'd still be terrible right if they had this original R rated cut but it'd be terrible with great boobs and blood yeah. which that's still bare minimum I want for a film like this. Uh-huh. If it's going to be dumb and stupid and fucking bullshit, give me some violence, give me some of them titties. And by the way, I'd be okay if they fucking showed you some some of that cock as well. <laughs> right? Dem titties, that cock. Fucking have at it. Get a bad nudity in here. Let's do something. Because what they're doing here is fucking terrible. So she's all like, and it's never, oh yeah, she's like actually a freedom fighter or anything. Mm-hmm. But just somehow, people are always telling her like mad secrets that could break down the regime. <laughs> like they're just be like, oh yeah, I've got a friend in the camera crew and he was like, by the way, all the cameras were trained on the handicap guy uh-huh. and it's like wait why is he telling you this uh-huh. you're just some rollerball player uh-huh. yeah how is she part of the resistance right is the, it just that the they're global like, underground are going to topple the rollerball network oh and does someone else like another member of the team's like look at the handicap guy's helmet yeah like uh-huh. the, 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 the chin strap had been cut so that it would fall off evidently this is a team of rollerball players who are all part time fucking detectives yeah, like they're, they're all, all just solving mysteries on the weekends rollerball yeah just- okay and then him uh, so American Pie and Rebecca remains the Amos are like let's go and speak to this guy uh, at which point it kind of goes in a kind of wee chase to see uh-huh. they get attacked by some goon and it's like oh shit you know they seem to have stumbled upon something and uh, at this point you're going I guess that this guy's going to uncover like a whole big conspiracy thing Yeah. but his entire character is that he's a fucking idiot he's playing this like a latter day Nick Cage he's just a kind of yeah. erratic lunkhead that doesn't make any sense right and so obviously right Jean Reno and Naveen Andrew, Andrews is it call him Naveen Andrews yeah the guy from, from Lost, Lost. Uh-huh. he's like uh, John Reno's fucking like right hand man mm-hmm. and they're just like yeah, money we're money gonna we love. we're gonna cream these poor miners yeah. for and whatever reason I, that we're he, was, skimming the miners getting well, them there, a gamble on the rollerball there is a great bit where he's like you may ask why I don't own the mine like nobody was thinking that <laughs> nobody, uh, nobody cares <laughs> no, like shut up and just, just make this film finish quicker and you know he's doing a kind of villain exposition thing a fucking American pie and he's like uh, you may ask why I do not own the mine well I don't need to I own the man who owns the mine <laughs> what does that mean I don't because you're, you're really desperate to sell this off-brand wrestling fucking <laughs> franchise to as we've said before American Cable Company none of it makes really any sense but even if we go with the logic of it right he's like the ratings seem to go up when there's violence mm-hmm. now to me at first I thought they were going to be like oh people are really into the violence and mm-hmm. that's when they start they get it accidentally but instead their plan to sell this to American cable companies and for the whole world to love this show was to hospitalise and or murder a <laughs> handicapped man or live on, on TV uh, just to orchestrate this it would be like somebody gave Wolf from the Gladiators a samurai sword and an orphan <laughs> like I understand it's like oh maybe the media's a bit coarse and stuff nobody wants to see a handicapped guy get fucking murdered no, no, no that's not gonna no. make they not it's not gonna make a show sellable Especially particularly in America slaughter on people scale. get offended by jokes on Twitter now they're yes. gonna be pretty offended if you murder a handicapped guy. <laughs> yeah. And to be fair, on the latter one, correctly. It was offensive <laughs> enough them having this idea. This is a business plan that nobody would go for, right? Mm-hmm. And throughout the film, it's like, yeah, 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 right, okay, so, God, we almost killed or almost killed a handicapped guy again. We're, we're not sure. <laughs> I got us some more reins. What we do now? Let's kill lots more people and even including, like, the only marketable people that are in our, our uh-huh. fucking franchise because they're literally like oh there's a couple of stars and everyone else has paid buttons yeah. and it's like well, wait the stars are American Pie and Ladies Love Cool J they're the people that people are tuning in to watch yeah. they are your cash cow they're yeah. your assets but like, now you've yeah. decided to actually they're disposable it's offset because the original film was all about how everyone was disposable the teams were largely faceless that's why Jonathan was such an anomaly yeah. to now this film is all about the star power and they they're selling the sport and now he's just decided to 180 and be like you know what if American Pie grazes his knees the ratings will go up it's money in the bank makes, makes no sense so then American Pie and LL Cool J <laughs> 
are going to get the fuck out of Dodge. Yeah. They've seen too much now, right? The people have died. They killed uh-huh. the cameraman. That the jig is up. They're the, out the, of there. The, 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 it was feeding information to Rebecca Remains Demos. <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, that's re- it's like, it's like if I was, like if I had uncovered a conspiracy that went to the top of the British government, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't go to like Aspilicueta, the fucking footballer, you know, uh-huh. or be like, oh man, John Stones is getting handed fucking like a USB <laughs> like, stick as we speak, you know, with some dirt on Theresa May. Um, and it's like, right, let's get the fuck out of Dodge. So LL Cool J and American Pie run off to the border, but they get chased by John Reno. Yeah. And what I can only describe as a brilliant stylistic choice. <laughs> Yeah, they film this whole ten-minute sequence in night vision. That sort of green, you know, like when you see footage of like the army. You and know, it's, the Paris Hilton sex tape. Oh yeah, okay. I've not seen that genuinely, but I, I'm aware of its existence. Okay, it, would it interest you to know that this scene was filmed twice? And in the first instance, there was such a terrible technical fuck up that they hadn't accounted for shooting at night so the footage was too dark. They tried to repair it by reshooting that sequence but didn't have the budget to complete the reshoots so they had to just take what they had put both sets of footage together and put this night vision thing over the top of it and hope that it tracked. But what it means is that there's like a 10 minute sequence where it's visually ugly there's also no reason for you to see it in night vision. It's not from the point of view of an art. Like if it's from a POV of somebody else, point of view of an art character uh-huh. Uh, sorry, I was using some technical terms after you, guys. <laughs> uh, but if, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, if it was from the point of view of somebody else or something, I could maybe see that. Or anyone in the scene was wearing night vision uh-huh. goggles. Uh-huh. No one is, but you, as the eye of God, mm-hmm. is seeing us through night vision. I mean, at this point, I'm genuinely thinking this is one of the worst films I've ever seen. This is up there for me. It is so technically incompetent. It's astounding that this is from the maker of Die Hard, Predator, The Thirteenth Warrior, Hunt for Red October. Like, like it's astounding. Yeah, the legend level of incompetence that's going on here. This is like John McThird Tiernan. <laughs> How long have you been sitting on that? Oh, I, I'm not going to lie. Quite a while. Uh, I doff my cap. So. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Oh, good night. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the guy who's made, in my opinion, two of the greatest movies ever. Mm-hmm. And as we discussed on our Die Hard and Predator episodes, like some of the camera moves mm-hmm. and the, the shots are fucking fantastic. Uh, whereas here, there are some really brutal jump cuts that add absolutely nothing to the proceedings. Stylistically, really blunt and there's no flair to it whatsoever no no it's terrible oh another thing I wanted to talk about about this one right mm-hmm. players get the numbers tattooed on their faces yeah what well, happens if you move team well, oh we've already got a number fucking 40 here mate yeah, you're going to have to get really fucking expensive laser tattoo removal surgery in Kazakhstan fucking good luck with that uh, I don't want I don't know I, I don't know enough about the country Ooh, I'd, I'd be a wee bit worried uh, also uh, in that escape plan oh of course attempt. we forgot to mention but I'm sorry like, ladies uh, ladies mourn Cool James. Yeah, Mr. Cool J himself is shot dying in a haze of bullets and green tint. Um, <laughs> uh, it's so lame. And what about his kids? Yeah, because they talk about he, his kids. What, was he an accountant before he was a rollerball You know, star? that's actually the one thing I quite liked about this is that... You found it completely believable that Cool J could have been an accountant? Yeah, actually, because like they had some wee jokes where it was like everyone assumed he was like some sort of ghetto hustler guy uh-huh. in Kazakhstan because they're like, he's, cause he's, he's a black. black guy, yeah. And he was... No, I, actually, I was an accountant for four years. <laughs> And I, quite, I thought that was actually quite funny. That's actually playing with people's expectations. Happens a total of maybe 35 seconds in the whole fucking hour and a half film. Uh, so, I mean, there's 35 seconds of it that didn't make me want to fucking gouge my eyeballs out. Uh, basically, the escape uh, has been foiled. Mm-hmm. Jean Reno is telling him, uh, Jonathan Cross, you've got to be the star here. I need to sell this and then you can go. He realises that Jean Reno knows that he's pumping. Rebecca remains Stamos. Mm-hmm. He's going like, man, he knows that I care about her. I need to make him think I don't care about her. I don't care about this chick. <laughs> Get rid of her. And he goes, oh kill her and he's like no no I really like her just trade her and it's like mate play it a bit cooler like you literally have just been like ugly oh, um, so he gets Jonathan E back for this game of which of course he's traded Rebecca Romain Stamos to the other team that they're playing and what he's done is actually got all the best players from the other teams uh-huh. and all the absolute brutal badasses get transferred into the team mm-hmm. that American Pie is playing against so that basically they're going to kill him and then the one sort of one of the, the feud nods to the original they've changed the rules and there's no penalties and no fouls mm-hmm. right which again literally trying to sell us to America the FCC went mental when Janet Jackson
Jackson got her tit out. Uh-huh. And they're going to be like, oh, that game, legalised murder? <laughs> yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah, put that on fucking NBC. Uh, and again, when the original, and it's like, don't go out there, they're mm. going to try and kill you. Jonathan E is, is actually trying to give himself some, some measure of control in his life and show that he cannot be caged, mm-hmm. even if it's only for this one thing. Whereas in this, I guess they're, they're setting up a Jonathan Cross, uh, American Pie, to be the guy that brings freedom to this country. Yeah. He's going to inspire this revolution. He's going to incite the, the class war. But he knows that the, the place is corrupt. Mm-hmm. And why is he playing rollerball? <laughs> yeah. he, he's already seen that he's double-crossed him and put mm-hmm. his check in there. But he's still like, no, I need to go out there. And, and you're like, why? But what was, why did Rebecca not try and escape with Cool J and I don't Pi? Know. She was like, Is uh, she still part of the underground resistance? Maybe. Maybe there is like there. A, a B story. We need Rebecca remain Stamos because she's the only person that's fluent in three bad accents. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Just this whole thing doesn't make any fucking sense. Okay, uh, while we're on the nonsense, why does Slipknot show up? I, and Pink, really, Pink's uh, in it for a second as well. Yeah, uh-huh. not, not together, not Slipknot and Pink, which oh, admittedly man, would, would be pretty good, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like suddenly this film's making me yeah. want to watch it, but she's just on like a video um, billboard. Coming up, because you get up, get the party started. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> This just shows you how in bad shape the record industry's in. <laughs> like, like bands are forced now to take these fucking gigs in Kazakhstan. Ten years ago it was Madison Square Garden, and now it's a fucking roller rink. Um, exactly, fucking Slipknot. Up here. It doesn't make any sense. It's all fucking bullshit, right? During this last game, so it's meant to be like more brutal and all that, mm-hmm. and they have like and they've suddenly introduced like this sharp lacrosse thing. Yeah, like blade, never some seen weird before. blade thing. And because foreshadowing, oh, there's been a big thing that every time they've played rollerball before, uh, American Pie had never worn his back protection. He'd never worn. Oh, that's the, right. They called it an armadillo, I think. Yeah. So and he's then, never worn that because he's took it. It stops his movement. It's fluid play. Yeah. He, you can't trap me, man. I'm like the wind. But he's worn it this time because yeah. when somebody attacks him, they're like, ah, oh, that super sharp thing is definitely cut him to ribbons. No, no way, way, it no hasn't. hasn't. But then also, Rebecca Romaine Stamos is like, holy shit, you're going to try and fucking kill American Pie. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're like, they grab her and they like handcuff her and put her on the ground. And it's like, you're not even trying to hide that. It's like in front of the crowd, the put TV cameras. Ah, it'd be like watching the World Cup final and you're like, oh look, Mbappe's in restraints. Yeah, Why is that? It doesn't make any... Oh, I'm just going to... Fuck me. I'm going to say it doesn't make any sense about a million times this episode. Fun drinking game, eh? Uh, <laughs> every time I say that, you'd be fucking dead within five minutes. This might be the dumbest, most incompetent film I've ever seen. This is so badly done. To be fair, it's going to be over soon and they can't get any worse. Ah, boy, am I a naive mm-hmm. fool. Because, uh, again, in the original, it's that personal victory and it maybe comes at a great personal cost. Uh-huh. But there's something primal about it well it just it could go either way like do we know that this is the moment that's the spark what? that starts a fire that creates change or has he just signed his own death warrant we don't know don't know oh and this one what he does is instead of putting the, the rollerball ball and the rollerball hoop he he flings it and it breaks the glass Jean Reno is watching it through and it kind of smacks him and then he jumps over into the box that they're watching it in two footed kicks somebody in the face with his roller skates and yeah batters like a couple of the guys and then John Reno escapes and he falls him down batters like an R couple of guys and then comes in to have like his mano a mano with John Reno mm-hmm. now that whole scene once he jumps into the box is seemed to be filmed in like jump cuts yeah. and time jumps uh-huh. so that basically you can't tell what's going on no. other than I guess he's beating these guys up but if I was I don't know making an action film Right, like if I was stripping away any political pretext and making a pure roller coaster action film, mm-hmm. you know, like let's just make us fun dumb shit. I'd probably and hear me out. Want to have at the end when you're having a big fight, maybe have it so that you could see them fighting. Mm-hmm. Call me, call me some sort of crazy fucking traditionalist. Maybe just have some like visual coherence so you know. But it was what like the fuck is happening. He put his hand back to punch the guy. And next thing you see the guy fall down. You mm-hmm. wouldn't actually see anything. But also like moments before when he was on the track, he's literally drenched in blood and. Sweat wet and then by the time he gets to the back office he must have gotten a wet wipe along the way yeah and so he eventually kills Jean Reno and then Naveen Andrews from Lost comes in and he kills him mm-hmm. and then while that's going on there's a revolt in the stands from the minors uh-huh. somehow the players have then, decided to jump into the audience and then the players and help, help out yeah. and like did she not even say he's like hey what's going on it's like I think you might have inspired a revolution uh-huh. right read that into the mic what I've put on the last page there okay written in some elegant script here is uh, Chrissy's final note in the film this was the dumbest shit I've 
ever seen. Thank you. That's that's all I have to say about it now. It's fucking brutal. Fuck you. Fuck you, John McTiernan. I'm glad you're in jail. I don't well, know if he did he go to now. jail. Yeah, he went to jail. Well, he, he should went, go back went, in jail for me having to watch that shit. He went to what Forbes magazine described as one of the 10 cushiest prisons in America. Yankton minimum security I'd prison. want him to go to fucking the prison in Oz. Like, <laughs> honestly, man. For a guy who's made two of my favourite films of all time, this is a fall from grace, man. You know, this is it's, fucking terrible. It, I mean, I understand that with any creator of art, music, film, whatever, you're not always good, but there's a level of technical proficiency. You know, Bob Dylan's not always released great albums, but he's never forgotten how to play guitar at any point. That's only what happens live. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's so poorly constructed. Like, I would almost want people to watch it to see, like, how badly done it is, mm -hmm. except then you'd have wasted it on your ha half your life. The weird thing is, the, the commentary, the actor's commentary in this film, uh, LL Cool J's American Pie and Stamos, all three of them use the phrase, this movie's so cool, or a variation thereof, repeatedly. Um, and, and also, just to tie back to McTiernan, is there not a moment when Rebecca Stamos says, yippee ki -yay, when she's on the motorcycle? Oh, you know what? I, honestly... <laughs> Again, from the sounds of me slapping my forehead, a fuck knows. I think, crucially, between the two films, what is completely evident is that one film, you could see that the rehearsal and the production really focused in on how to make the game work. Whereas this remake, Stamos says, even at the end of the commentary, that by the end of the shoot, they still didn't know how the game was to be played. They weren't even clear on the rules of the game. I think those two anecdotes point to what was going on within production. Yeah, I mean, I would say, like, the first film was about something and the second film can't even be about tits and violence because they fucked that up <laughs> which are like the three best and most easiest things to do in a film with, with Rollerball maybe you could have remade it uh, in a slightly interesting way but they didn't even sound like they didn't even fucking try mm -hmm. with the John McTiernan script genuinely <laughs> fucking <laughs> sickened at how bad it was how amateurish that was and that there was no boobs and blood <laughs> boobs and blood boobs and blood boobs and blood thanks guys thanks guys Well, growing up in Glasgow, obviously, I don't know anything about sport and violence. So. <laughs> wait, or wait, wait, evil, wait. incompetent sports administrators <laughs> looking at you, Scottish Football Association. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, man, when they hear this. <laughs> <laughs>